wall. I did it. I hit the wall. Cycle so grip. After several prototype builds, I have finally made a successful God Slayer version 6. Thanks to some changes that were done in Deepwoken, I managed to make the build 30% stronger than version 5. Also, for your information, there is actually two V6s, both having varying difficulties required in the progression. And version 6 is also a glass cannon PvE, so it's only intended for use if you want the absolute best possible build for bosses since enemies can't deal damage to you if they're dead. However, I will be releasing a new version 5 of the God Slayer as well, since V5 is tankier and is just far better for consistent play, if you're not incredibly good at parrying bosses. As always, I will be dropping the showcase and build maker links at 2000 likes or 500 subscribers gained on the video, so make sure you like and subscribe if you want to see how strong version 6 really is. I have several other PvE builds on the way soon, so make sure you don't miss them. And as always, join the Discord so you see the build maker link when it's out. Hello everyone, and welcome to one of the most long-awaited videos on the channel, God Slayer V6. After spending so much time optimizing and prepping, V6 honestly came from one singular change. That being Chain Warden now gives you the Arc Welder Mantra slots and has way better requirements. So with this build I've basically been able to remove the former fortitude on the build and reinvest that to well result in way more damage. I will come out and say this, this build is going to be insane to prog but not in a good way, insane in the sense that it's going to be stupidly mid max to the point where I'm literally going to be killing Duke pre shrine on this build to get one mantra. Now I don't want to freak you all out since I know not everyone loves mid maxing to the extent that I do. So instead of the normal sub versions, I'm probably going to divide V6 into essentially three tiers. What I'm progging is going to be the tier three, the best possible build you can make, completely mid max to have every mantra and stat point you could possibly need. But it comes with the downside of being harder to prog. However, to make it easier for people who, well, don't need stuff such such as Pillars of Aresia, I am also going to be including a tier 2 and a tier 1 God Slayer that are essentially easier versions of the build to prog. Now, don't get me wrong, this build is still not good for beginners. You need to be very good at the game to use the God Slayer properly. If you don't know, V5 was already mastered by people like Nibrula to the point where he could, without building any chain stacks beforehand, grip Chaser before the ceiling even fell. So my goal for this version 6 is to well surpass that and also be insanely good at all other forms of speedrunning. So yeah, no fortitude, it does allow me to, well, get more damage out of the build. And the thing is, you really don't need any sort of healing on a boss killer, because realistically, Condition Runner, it's still one of the best defensive talents of PvE in the game. It's just passive healing. But during Chaser, God Slayers already kill him so quick that, well, you don't really need to heal against Chaser if he's dead. Same thing with Primadon, you can't really run around. Duke, you're not running. Kaido and Ferryman, they either die too fast or you can't run. Etheron is kind of the only justification for taking Conditioned Runner on a build such as a God Slayer. However, yet again, Etheron will die in one cycle, or even zero cycles on this build, and health packs exist. The escape sequence also isn't anything to worry about, since the build's just gonna have so much mobility that you'll be fine in the end. So TDLR, the removal of Fortitude, is basically just gonna let me get a lot more damage, because, well, God Slayer's never really need fortitude in the first place. I'm kind of going back to the roots of the God Slayer with V6, just trying to make it the strongest possible build in terms of offense and mobility. I am really curious to see just how much of an improvement it's going to be when I finish progressing it, since I know no matter what, this build is going to be better than V5. Before I release this build, I'll probably be trying to get a lot of top speedrun times with it, just so I can showcase that, well, the build is actually good and worth progging. Since believe it or not, you do need to convince people to prog builds like God Slayers, since, well, it's a li I mean, it's a time commitment, but honestly, if you know what you're doing and follow the prog, it's not really that hard. Anyways, I'm gonna head back to Castle Light right now, and we are gonna go get the Gale Cutter, because the first thing we're gonna do is start training our Gale. Now, I didn't invest any points on purpose, just so I could do this immediately. 
There we go. We are looking for something like Air Force to train on the guards. What I'm going to do is head over to Mystic and guarantee it. The willpower first, it's honestly just to make the build a little more convenient to Brog. Because while I could just AFK stabbing the training item for ages, I think that it's going to be fine if I get all my elements a little bit later. Just because this build's going to get so much knowledge passively anyways. Alright, Wind Blade, I'll grab that. I'll chuck Gale Carter there and grab our Song Chan. That'll make training our Gale slightly faster. Now, well, this is kind of going to be our life. Hit things with Windblade and increase our Gale little by little. We're going to go to 50, then what we're going to do is escape deaths, and I've organized for one of my speedrunner friends to kill Duke for me. Since, obviously, I don't expect anyone to solo kill Duke at, like, power 6. Listen, I may be insane for making builds like this, but I'm not actually insane. As you can see, training element on this build is just so goddamn fast. Already power 3. I'll grab Breathing Impact. We're going to need that on the build. And you know what? This build, I don't care about HP. I'm doing that. Yeah, kind of an insane thing to do, but I can't lie. Why waste my talent cards on HP when I can get things to minusculely increase my damage? Like I said, the truth of PvE is, things can't damage you if they're dead. That's kind of the whole philosophy behind V6. Just focus in on having pure damage and mastery over every element of the game. Although, I will probably release the improved version of V5 that I never released publicly. That kind of just gets Bulldozer Free Shrine and optimizes the Flame Charm a little bit. So I'm going to release that as sort of like a... If you still want a top tier build, because, well, obviously God Slayers is still- Obviously V5 is still going to be a top tier build. So I'm going to release that V5 version as sort of the, if you want a top tier build, because, well, V5 is obviously not any weaker, just as an option for people who don't want to play something as glass cannony as this. Now what I'm going to do is guarantee one star Gale Mantras, grab that, off the cut, we want that, and we also want wind steps, so freeze and take. I'm going to burn Fishman. We don't want it to pollute our pool of rare cards. Uh, don't need any of these, I think. Oh, Gale Lunge. We did need that. We only need a couple more Gale Points. Then I'm just going to use an Idol to go to the surface. I could kill Enforcer at the moment, but that's going to take too long. Sadly, this build has Vow of Thorns, just because it makes progging way quicker. Plus, the increased monster drops are pretty good. Obviously, Vow of Thorns doesn't apply to chests. But I guess it makes getting Dread Tooth and Worm Tooth a little bit easier. I did try to prog V6 without Vow of Thorns a little while ago, but it was so bad to the point where I was getting like three willpower points from finding a corrupt crab at power one. So yeah, as much as I would have liked to not go Vow of Thorns, it's just so goddamn fast that I really need it. Regardless, there is our Gale, so let's grab an idol and head to the surface. Use it, uh, release me from the depths, and here we go. This is a very early time to escape deaths on one of my progs. Got one of my speedrunner friends, huge thank you to Eggy. He's just gonna teleport me over to Duke and kill him for me. If you want to do this on your own builds and actually and actually sacrifice yourself to getting Pillars of Aresia pre-shrine, then you can always go to a server like PvE Hub and get a Duke carry there, since they're pretty cheap and safe to do. I just got the easiest Duke kill of my life. Don't worry, I'll get this bad for you. 58,000! <laughs> Yeah, you disconnected. No, I'm good. I'm, I'm, I'm here. I'm here. Oh, wait, 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 wait you're what? alive? I died instantly. What? Right, homie for Duke to instantly shrunk left me. At least you're getting the good RNG in terms of his attacks. Oh, Never mind. that hurt. The power four's got this. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, oh. get off. Oh, he doesn't actually do that much. Oh, wait, he, he does less damage to you than he does to me. He's gonna grab oh. him. Oh, oh the two bars. I'm good, I'm good, I'm good. Hey, don't worry, I'm, I just need it to like 60%. I'll take his aggro, I'll take his aggro. Oh, my ra- Don't worry, I can place another one. I have 99 campfires on me. Oh, shield's broken, shield's broken, it's good, we're good, we're good. I can heal up. Oh, uh, I'm still lag spiking. Oh. I'm on 7%. Help! Help! Oh my god! <laughs> Bro, he's got, he's got a grip, he's got an Instagram, he's got an Instagram. I'm getting jumped! Did you die? I'm fine. I got jumped! I oh, can't leave the game! I, Wait, I don't think I left the game in time. <laughs> Alright. <laughs> Let's hope this gives me pillars of Aresia. 
Okay, so huge thank you to Owen, one of the fellow skipper grippers who carried me through that duke. Now we have Pillars of Aresia. I'm just gonna go back down to depths and we can continue progging. Now that we're back in depths, we've gotta to start to train our Thundercall. We need to get it up to 50 at the end of the build. So I'm gonna start by investing one point to that to power up. And now we've gotta do the difficult job of getting a power up just off Thundercall, which is going to be pretty painful to say the least. These aren't really good cards we're getting at the moment, which is unfortunate. Uh, don't even want Scuba Drowner on this build. I'll pick Lightweight just for now. See, I seek Initiate level Thunder Mantras. We're gonna do a really easy training method, but an honestly slow one. Let's just go buy a self-conducting loop and spam that to get Thunder Call. Yes, this is incredibly slow, but because we don't have a Thunder Call Mantra yet, there's nothing else we can really do. It's fine though since you can literally just auto click this training item until you power up. So I'll see you guys in a second. And we are now at the point where we can just power up from our auto dodak points. Hopefully we get something like lightning beam to make training significantly quicker. Don't need any of these, I'll grab the rare for now. Fold here, and let's see, jolt grab didn't actually get a good mark. I don't know, does jolt grab make the guards aggro? Let's see. Oh, it doesn't. Okay, we're just gonna spam Jolt Grab in order to train our Thundercall all the way to 50. It's probably best that I get a Blessed Gem just to make training Jolt Grab even quicker, since doing it one at a time on guards isn't netting me that many points. I would have much rather get Lightning Beam on this build, since that can let me attack guards with a piercing move, but we'll just have to make Jew with what we get. Put Jolt Grab on that, and now back to training on the guards. It shouldn't take us long to get up to 50 Thundercall on this build. I should also probably start using Mystic to get a lot of the Gale talents we need, since this build's pre-shrine is relatively difficult. Well, more specifically, the version of God Slayer Mystic that I'm going is difficult. Because I'll, I'll reiterate it once again, I am intentionally frogging the hardest and most unnecessarily complicated version of E6. So unless you actually care about Duke speedrunning like me, then you don't even need to go Pillars of Aresia. I just want to make sure that I'm getting absolutely everything I can on this build. And if that means having no HP, so be it. So I want three star mantras. Actually, I meant to guarantee talents, my bad. Uh, after my static is uncontrollable, then that should give us the full static withdrawal tree. Okay, some jump start, we'll grab that. Then raging static. Right, well, back to go grabbing the guards. Well, let's see, uh, don't need any of these, so we will fold here. Do I already have inhale? Oh, I do already have inhale. Very nice, I thought we didn't. That's why I was, uh, Anyways, but all right, we should reach 50 Thunderclaw on this build before we power up next, anyway. From there, we can get our Spark Swap. And while I could go Lightning Cloak on this build, I'm just not that big of a fan of Lightning Cloak. I think it's kind of funky to use. If it shows up, I might grab it, but there's a real chance that I just re-roll it later. Should be one or two more Jolt Grabs in order for us to have 50 Thunderclaw. Oh, there we go. 50 Thunderclaw obtained. Oops, wait, don't power up. Okay, good. We got 51 Thunderclaw. I need to go Waste Knowledge at Shrine of Mastery. From here, the build is actually pretty easy. We just get to 25 strength, then to 40 willpower, and that is the pre-shrine done. Although that being said, we still do need to go up to the surface, kill Kaido, get our mantra, get our talent hands, because this build is pretty tight in terms of the mantras that we need. We use my dumbbell. I think if I just go beat up the jellyfish outside, I should be able to power up, but while I'm here, I might as well end up taking some jobs. Oh, let's see. That's annoying, that's annoying, and the rest is pretty easy. We still have the Duke quest because that's bugged, but Lord Regent would just kill me if I went back. This should give me the final strength. Power up. There's quite a lot of three-star mantras we could get. Discovery, I'm gonna freeze that. We actually do want it because it makes Chaser slightly more consistent and Fairyman a little better. We don't want Spectre, so I'm gonna burn that, take Discovery. I would much rather be proccing Silence's Blade on this build. We'll take Surge, Wind Passage, oh okay, a lot of good things here, so I'll take Wind Passage for now. Let's go beat up these Gigameds, and then hopefully once we get down there, some stuff will spawn for us to kill. Since we're Power Age, we we can kill whatever spawns significantly quicker. We've got we have after cut as well, so I'll make sure we be popping that for a damage boost. Shaco already dead, not bad. Power it. Oh, let's start using the dumbbell. See how quick we can get to 25 strength on the build. It's nearby Lionfish. I'll go target that. Hopefully it aggro's on me. Okay, it is. Upsetic withdraw. Wind passage. Now we can just shred him. Damn, that was actually really fast, like can't lie. Build is already starting to build up insane amounts of damage. I'm seriously so excited for the end. I'm so curious just how much 
much damage we can deal to bosses. Power up. There's still quite a lot of three-star monsters that we need. Carnival, we can get that post shrine, so there's no real reason to get that right now. Uh, we want all of this, so I'll grab Suffocating Impact. Rising Astral Spark Swap, yep, we want that. Then we'll get Song Chant. It appears there was an Alpha Chakra down there, but I think he's fallen off the map. Eh, probably not worth me to go down and get that. Let's just run around until another job spawns. Yeah, really, nothing is spawning when we have three other jobs. Oh, two, because of that Alpha Chakra. Another job has spawned where? What? What does it mean a job has spawned? No, it hasn't. Unless that Alpha Chakra down there is somehow camping. Lionfish, that's not even for our job, but I'm going to kill it. I'm just going to stat check the Lionfish. I know we just, we just deal too much damage for it to matter. There we go. There's the chest. Hopefully, that'll get us up to all the strength we need. There we go. Final hard part is... Well, not even that hard. Let's just use this till we power up. And then we need to go to the surface to do the final preparations for the build. Actually, will we power up again? Let me actually go check the build maker to make sure that I'm powering up at the right point. Uh, we actually power... Oh, we can power up power 11. Oh, yeah, we'll be good. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll be perfectly fine. Power up right now. Hopefully, I get Pillars of Aresia. Oh, I want that. So I'll grab Charge Return for now. And this... Don't want Return to Dark Ages. Since this is frozen, I'm just going to fold here. Carnivore, we want that, uh, but I'll grab the Surge card. We can only get that free shrine. Cloak, Thunder, oh, okay, this is bad. I mean, I guess I'll grab Lightning Cloak for now. It's fine, though. We have plenty of knowledge spare, so we can just use Shrine of Temptation if need be. Anyways, let's head to the surface and do the final free shrine preparations. Like I said, this build is very specific in terms of a lot of stuff. It may be any race, but you really need to know what you're doing, which isn't an issue since God's Slayers aren't for beginners anyways. Now that we're in the surface, this, the first thing we're gonna go do is kill the nomads and the bay camp just because we need to get frost draw on the build then we can start to get the extra talent hands sadly it looks like someone else has killed them so we'll have to serve a hop now that the neve people are here let's just assassinate this guy then try to assassinate the other guy and that is two fridge prisons so i am going to run away before they jump me i'll go get the glass blood from the frost draw trainer then we can start to do our other jobs let's hand in the prisms and that is the first step of our overworld done let's go deal with everything else collect this book and we will head back to do the first one of the extra talent head quests the one at mini is very important because it'll give us aces for the build the sad thing about how i decided to prog this is i effectively made it a little harder on myself in terms of both mantras and talents honestly i wouldn't recommend going 20 willpower first in the stat order unless you really don't want to spam the training items because that kind of wasted an extra power up where i could have gotten something good from gale breath or thundercall it doesn't matter though since we'll get so many talent hands from these three extra quests that the build's gonna be easy to complete i hope this doesn't jinx me but i've managed to prob 11 god slayers in a row without any fails at all like the pre-shrine has been perfect on all of them. So I wonder if I'm eventually going to break that streak. That might happen today. However, worst case, we can just pop a Moon's Eye pre-shrine and use Shrine of Chance. While it's definitely a much better idea to do something like Blasphemy if you're missing multiple cards, because of just how obsessed I am with making this build perfect, if it comes down to it, I will use a Moon's Eye Tome pre-shrine. Although by no means do you actually need to do that. I'm just obsessed with perfection. Let's go hand in the second quest. Now now one more to go at Aresia, then we can head to Vigils to do the mantra quest there. Final quest started. I realized while I'm here that I might as well get the final dying ember that we're going to need for our flame charm afterwards. So after I kill a shocker, I'll go up and then I will kill a golem. So yeah, that terrapod is so annoying to fight. Let's just pop our buffs and oh, that's two shockers at once. Oh, that's good. It's going to be kind of hard to deal with. I believe we will not cower in fear. We will kill the Shockers. Oh, actually, I wasn't even expecting the win. Well, that's the Shocker quest done. So I guess I'm just going to go up and get our Dying Embers now. I believe I can just go up around here. Yep, that. this is where we go to kill the Golems. I'll go kill one. And then I believe I can just glide up straight to Vigils. Here's the Golem. Let's fight it. I only need to do one spin move. Then Providence also just going to kill it. There we go. Numbers are limited. And... 
easy dying ember. So let me just get on top of here. We need to go all the way out here. Actually, wait, I need to hand in the quest before I do anything. Then we will go to vigils. Let's just jump down here and we will go hand in the quest. That's the final one done. And we can start a mantra quest. The final mantra that I need pre-shrine is Pillars of Aresia on this build. Just because, well, for Duke speedrunning, that's literally it. That's the only reason I killed Duke. So I could speedrun Duke on this build if I really wanted. Again, yeah, the highest tier of V6 is pretty unnecessary unless you're like me and want everything. Actually, wait, we need to do the sailing quest as well because I want to also get that card to make the build perfect. All right, yeah, we're actually, <laughs> we have a little bit more to do pre-shrine. Let's hand the books in and I hope that I'll end up getting pillars. Astral, ooh, okay, not looking good. It's okay, we can go to Shrine of Temptation and reroll this. We need to sail quite a lot to use this guy anyways. Now that we're in Easton, I am going to start by getting Flame Charm and then we can kill Kaido. Actually, never mind. I think I'm going to mix that up and kill Kaido first just because we are already close to Boatman's Watch. Now that I'm at Boatman's Watch, I am just going to get on my Ferryman slot, spawn on Kaido, weaken it, and then hop back to this one. I decided to hop on my 10,000 damage Gale Mage. This is a really old build build it's literally 84 but honestly out of all my builds this is aged by far the best unlike the god slayers which got on a constant improvement this is just a really high damage gale build and honestly all i've really been able to do to improve it is gain two percent pen but oh, that's not really again. gonna do anything so i'm not even gonna pop it i just haven't bothered to pop it for two extra pen because you know this build still is incredibly good to this day like, I, I only have an Isha's ring on, and I'm probably gonna... Oh my god. I pressed the Windows key by accident. Sorry, Fairyman's about dead anyways. And dead. What? Not dead? Okay, maybe I do need a ring of casters. Dead. What the... My timing is so off for him. Do they buff his health? What? I'm pretty sure they buff Fairyman's health. That... Okay, got auto manifestation. First try. But Fairyman was way tankier than I remember. I don't know, I could just be throwing. As expected, not gonna be anything good in this chest. So let's go spawn a Kaido. What I'm going to do to spawn Kaido and make sure that I can quickly kill it on my low power build is just weaken it on this slot, then hop back to my God Slayer slot. So I'll just spawn my Sloop and head out to the edge of Void Sea. Should be about here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the auto manifestation and then immediately start running. I'm probably going to hit by get hit by his beam, which is going to do a fair chunk of damage. Okay, never mind, we're good. That means we keep perfect flash. Now it's just up to damaging Kaido as much as possible. I only want to go until I posture break him once. I want to make sure not to do too much damage to him that I just outright kill him. But I definitely want to do enough so that it doesn't take me 50 years to fight him on my slot. Just because we have perfect flash active, he's probably already kind of close to death, I can't mind. I'm probably going to hop in a second just because I don't want to kill- Oh, not mean to do that. I don't know how I dodged that attack, but I did apparently, so uh, I'll take that. I'm just going until I see him posture break once. I'm surprised that hasn't happened. Already. Oh, rip perfect flash. Unfortunate. He di I did not mean to kill Kaido. I thought he could tank that. Okay, that's really weird that he didn't posture break. It's fine though. We'll just go to another fairy man and then we can respawn Kaido. I'll make sure to do less damage next time. Okay, that was a little bit faster of a kill, but honestly, uh, yeah, it probably just is the fact that they're gonna bring up casters on. Maybe they did like shatter nerf Gale against fairy man or something. No auto manifestation, so we've got to go back in. No auto manifestation. I can't lie, guys. It was taking so long to get auto manifestations on my ferryman build so i hopped on a build i have never shown on video this is a god slayer v6 prototype also yeah i'm kind of in the floor of Primanon right now don't ask long story so let me just reset to song seeker and i am going to go to boatman's and use the auto manifestations on this slot this was a prototype i made eh, about a month ago i want to say it was designed to essentially well have more mantra damage instead of fortitude so essentially the opposite way that the current build is going the build was actually fairly good it did decent damage but honestly just wasn't enough i do have iron sing because i got 50 iron sing pre-shrine as well as 50 thunder call as a whole though the build honestly didn't perform that well. Also, yeah, it's a Lake Strider, just so I can have stuff like Adrenaline Surge, 
Taunt and Spark Swap all on the build. Don't get me wrong, this is a very good build and I might eventually publicly post it, but at least compared to the V6 we are proging, this is not currently better. Because, you know, I made significantly better use of the No Fortitude on the V6 that we're proging right now. I'll still be able to weaken Kaido pretty fast on this build. Also, yeah, 331 HP. Little warning, that's kind of the amount of HP we're gonna get on this V6. Again, I will release a improved version 5 if you still want to have a little more fortitude and a little more healing but to be honest you don't need you don't need hp for bosses what is happening to my hat huh yeah you don't need hp for bosses they can't damage you if they're dead that's kind of like the oh my god that shocker <laughs> i i have venetians on i have venetians on but yeah they can't damage you if they're dead so like if i just deal such an overall overwhelming amount of damage that i basically break bosses they can't damage me and therefore i don't need to tank their attacks i mean besides um the f key is free you get the f key on any build so let's just head to ferryman and i'll spawn kato here we are we're, we're about to enter boatman's however i'll just sit in the edge of void seat grab auto manifestation spawn kato did not want a mantle there Okay, yeah, I've got to run from Kaido before he hits me. I think we're good, though. Did not get hit by his beam as well, so that means we retain perfect flash. So yeah, I decided not to go Crystal on this build just because I wanted an easier time dealing with Primadon. To be fair, that is probably one of the reasons why the build didn't perform so well. Okay, I should probably calm down at hitting Kaido in a second. Just- Oh! Oh, okay, I'm in private server. If you guys don't know, you can't actually do the server hopping trick in private server. So yeah, my, my bad for forgetting I was in it. Well, it looks like we're just gonna kill Kaido now. Kaido is dead, and now I'm gonna go do this in a public server. It's a good thing I have a bunch of spare auto manifestations. Okay, attempt to watch out for the beam immediately because I don't want to get put in danger. I think we're good. Just gonna climb up here fast. Now we can start to weaken Kaido. Oh my god, the server is so laggy. What the hell? Am I about to DC? Why are England? Why are England servers so bad? What? Instantly disconnected. I hope Kaido. Oh, I don't even remember what server I'm in. I'll have to check on the recording. Okay, after checking, it appears we are in Kind Castle. Yep. All right, Kaido should still be here, hopefully, so we can start to weaken him and hopefully. England doesn't instantly DC us again. What the? Huh? Bro, why are England servers so goddamn bad? What the hell? Just instantly DC'd me. Third time's the charm. Okay, England servers want to work now. And Kaido is still here. Perfect. Is Kaido even aggroed? I get it. Yes. I'll just go into the first posture break and then I will serve a hop. Oh, my crit actually applies surge. I did not know that. Okay, that could actually be useful information for a build one day. That my crit applies surge on Pale Briar. First one. Uh, I feel like it's safe to push a little further. Okay, I'm just gonna do this little combo. One more crit, and then I'm gonna leave. Okay, find castle. I gotta remember that. Find castle. Hatter should hopefully be pretty close to death. Go. Man, this is gonna be pretty slow. We don't have mantra. We don't have like. Oh, wait, we, we have actual something. I'll look up lightning cloak as well. Make it a little faster. Oh, is lightning cloak gonna run out? Oh my god, it's gonna run out because Kaido is just being a coward. Why is Kaido staying down there so often? What? Back in posture break? He's taking a lot less damage per posture break now just because we're power 10 versus a completely maxed out V6 prototype. Now that I think about it, it probably would have been a better idea to hop on the Celestial Saint build since Kaido is a lot less resistant to PL mantras. Getting auto this way doesn't take that long. I mean, getting auto this way is pretty easy but you know it's kind of just a lot of waiting for Kaido's hitbox to be within reach. If you do find that event at the sea where you just give a guy a canteen full of water for Ardor, we'll definitely do that instead. Like, but that event's kind of rare and this way is kind of AFK to get Ardor for each run. There we go. Kaido dead. That didn't really take that long. Besides we didn't even get hit so if we needed Chain of Perfection we would have actually gotten it there. Let me equip that Kaido got from Kaido. It looks alright at least for now. Let's grab Ardor and now I I think I'm just gonna reset the Song Seeker to get Flame Charm. So I'll see you guys at the temple. Here we are. So the temple's just up there. Let's make our way to that. Before the Song Seekers hit us with Flame Ballista, let me get Flame Charm. Oh, of course we get hit. I do not want to try to fight Song Seekers on England servers, so I'm just gonna camp up here. And I think I can honestly just go to depths as soon as I'm out of danger. Then I'll just use the shrines there to finish up the pre-shrine, and then I think we're done. If I wanted more knowledge, I could go to Fort Merritt and do that to knowledge quests there with the was it the neve person where you have to kill the authority but honestly i have a moon's eye tome so i'm gonna do that but there's a lot of easy ways to get knowledge pre-shrine if you're missing stuff like i am i just 
decided before I go to Shrine of Order, I am just going to modify Wind Passage to go further. It'll just make navigating the depths significantly more convenient. There we go. That's much better for navigation. I'm also going to pull out a Moon's Eye Tome. This will be the first time ever on a God Slayer that I'm actually using one pre-shrine. I mean, at least to my knowledge. Again, I will remind you, I am specifically progging the hardest and most difficult mid-max version of V6. The actual main version will not be this aids because you know no, most people do not care about Duke speedrunning. I just want to do everything all on build. So let's head down to Young Shoal and start to use these shrines there. Here we are at Temple of Hearts. I've got my final power up to do pre-shrine. Actually, wait, do I? Okay, I have everything that I need in terms of investment points. Uh, aside from the, the charisma. Oh my god, I have to go back to Castle Light. All right, please hold. Of course I forget. Of course I forget it. What else would I possibly forget? It's all right. It just seems we need to run back to Castle after we Shrine of Order. Not too much of an issue since I'll probably end up going out and coming back later. That's the how to make friends. So once again, let's go to Temple Hearts. Final time being here, let's get our final power up pre-shrine as well. We are going to have a lot of extra talent hands and hopefully get Pillars of Aresia since I believe that's the only thing we're missing. And power up. Seven talent hands, no mantra, that's fine. We'll just use Shrine of Temptation. But let's guarantee Art or Scream, own frequency. I don't believe we're missing anything else, but I will go check after. We want Neuro. We can also get Silence's Blade, I believe. So I'm gonna burn extra stuff. Do I want, uh, I'm unsure if I want Champion's Regalia. I think I might as well take it. Still not getting Art or Scream for some reason. There we go. Okay, this is a lot of cards we need. I think I should freeze and then take auto scream. Yeah, I think I'll just do that. Carnivore, I mean, we want that, but like, we need Silence's Blade, I think. There we go. <laughs> Perfect timing. Are we actually gonna get all the talents we need? No issues? I think so. Okay, we got one more talent hand left and I don't think we're missing anything. Don't want Return to Dark Ages. Uh, anything here we could need? I mean, I'll take this, but I don't think we'll ever use it. Then we'll grab one more proficiency. Now I do need to get Pillars of Aresia. So what I'm gonna make sure is that I guarantee, where is it? I see, do we already have three star wind mantras guaranteed? I think we do, but I'm gonna re- Oh, mantras of what? Why can I not get three star wind mantras, huh? I'm confused. And we can get hybrid mantras. Is there like, oh, I think it's something that prevents us from getting pillars of Aresia. Maybe it's like a power requirement? I don't really know, but like, to be honest guys, I, I can't I can't be bothered to get Pillars of Aresia. I also realized I forgot that Sailing Talent, Wind Waker, or whatever it is. Honestly, I'll remove Pillars of Aresia from the build maker. That's two extra talents and you know, it wasn't really required anyways. And the Wind Waker thing is basically never gonna get used. So I'll just get out of Wind Blade and hopefully get Tempest Splits. There we go. I think that's everything that I need for shrine if I'm being honest. So I'm just gonna go check on the build maker and if if we have everything we need, then I am going to Shrine of Order. Okay, so after checking over the build maker, it seems that we only missed one singular talent, which is pretty good. And that talent is just Last Resort, which isn't that major, but I might as well get. And again, if you consider that I only missed Tempest Blitz because I was trying to get Pillars of Aresia, that is, I'm pretty sure, a bugged mantra, we basically did the pre shrine perfect. Yeah, this isn't any, you, even the hardest version of the God Slayer, you can still prog perfectly. Obviously, Obviously, you, didn't, you don't even need a Moon's Eye Tome like I did. So let me just invest a point into Agility, then Weapon. Then after that, we will drink our Glass Blood and Heart Blood. Or is that Heart, Heart Blood? I didn't really pay attention to the name, but that should be everything we need. Let's check. Plenty and everything. Now let's see. What, what floor do you guys think I got? Let's see. Obvious. Hey, that's fine. It does not affect us at all. So from here, I think it's just a matter of us training off our stats a little bit more, and then the build is pretty close to being done. Okay, guys, I have a uh, good news and bad news. The good news is with Power 16, uh, the bad news is OBS crashed, and I lost probably would have been like half an hour of footage. So uh, I believe it ended right after we shrine of ordered. Let me just briefly catch you up on what happened. So I just killed a bunch of monsters, got Warden's Blades, got all the way up to 75 Frost Draw, got some more talents, and now I'm debating whether or not I should go to the surface and kill bosses for heavy weapon. I'll probably yap about the same stuff since all that footage is now gone, but you really didn't miss much. If you like can tell the difference at all, these are the new talents I have, but the talents aren't perfect, so like don't take this as the official talent 
bottom list and you know i probably but regardless i think i will actually end up going to the surface right now yeah kind of sucks i lost all that footage but we press on so let me just use this idol and i'll see you guys in the surface a crypt blade contractor at song seeker yeah i don't i don't like trust this guy is that man no okay just paranoid so for the next step on this build we are going to need good reputation with the authority and the fastest way that i can personally think of to do that is to go to hive and do the jobs there unless there's some other way that i'm forgetting about which i'm sure someone's gonna correct me in the comments so let me just get the seafarer's chime and we will head to hive so now that we're at hive i'm gonna show you a really convenient way to gain rep with a ton of factions and it's just by abusing the jobs at hive because there isn't too many and there isn't really anything difficult around here you'll often get the jobs stacking for factions Obviously that chakra wasn't a job, but when one spawns, you'll see just how much rep I get from killing a single thresher. Job is nearby? Okay, thresher and king thresher. To be fair, you really shouldn't be doing what I'm doing right now to kill them, but I'm just playing it risky because I know that I'll be fine. Now as soon as this king thresher dies, you'll see... Well, you'll get- there'll be a lot of messages. My actions please the hive. My actions please the ignition union. My actions please the central authority. This is what we're actually after. And my actions please the hundred legions. Yeah, it's very- oh, children in a way as well. That's what, five separate factions from a single job? Yeah, hive is pretty good if you need to get a lot of rep very fast with a lot of factions. I mean, I only need the authority for this build, but, you know, I might as well just take it that extra mile and get good rep with all factions. So my method is essentially just gonna be to run around because as you can see as soon as i get the thresher infestation job i kill that and then i'll get rep with four more factions four more factions children in the bay ignition union hundred legions and the central authority i'm not gonna narrate every single job like this but if you just server hop doing them you get rep for everything this probably isn't the fastest way to gain rep just for the authority but it's definitely fun to do i can't lie just seeing that many messages upon killing a target is pretty satisfying so we've been grinding jobs for quite a bit and i think we finally have enough money and enough rep in order to do everything we need to on this build as you you can see we have about 12,000 notes however if I sell the loot I've been collecting that should be close to 15,000 actually over 15,000 very nice let's go check our rep with different factions and we are a hero to the divers ally to ignition friend to children of a and then ally to places like the central authority hive and hundred legions so perfect that ended up getting us more rep than I was expecting to be honest so now I'm just going to go over to Fort Merritt and we we can start to get our oath. While I'm going over there, I'll repeat some of the rambles that I did during that footage that sadly wasn't recorded by OBS. So basically, one of the questions that I get asked the most, especially as a YouTuber who does a lot of builds, is what build do I make? And honestly, my answer to most people's questions, if they're not specifically after the best possible build, is just make whatever. Because to be honest, the most important thing about any build in the game isn't how it performs. It, it, you, since most people don't necessarily care about getting God Seeker or the number one speed with the build but if you enjoy a build and think it looks interesting that's more important because like personally i enjoy mid maxing which is why i even started doing the god slayers which are heavily mid max builds and well this build especially is going to be the definition of min-max. However, if people prefer simpler builds, then I try to cater to that as well. That's what the Celestial Saint is. It's not the strongest build in the game, but it's still very strong in its own right. It's meant to essentially be a version of the God Slayer that's more accessible to most people, since you don't necessarily have to perfect the build in terms of your skill in order to use it. So where is Central Authority? Oh, that way. Because in PvP, most people will just end up making the flavor of the week meta build when honestly the people that enjoy the game the most does obvious i mean apart from the people that do obviously enjoy playing meta the people that just enjoy deep broken the most are the people who don't necessarily play meta and will essentially just 
find some cool talent interaction they want to do with the build. A lot of my friends, when they are making their builds, they'll just find something cool and then make a full build out of it. One build that just comes to mind is my friend who wanted to essentially make a build all about aerial combos. So essentially that'd just be Rising Wind on Gale, Grand Crit, then you can have the Gale double jump to get higher, and that was essentially just a fun random build he made. And honestly, unless you're really, unless you are competing at that top chime level, you don't really have to play meta builds. Because I can't lie, keep in mind this is coming from like a outsider perspective, purely watching top chime, but I don't even, I can't, I don't buy that a lot of people actually enjoy playing, well, a lot of meta builds, at least in chime. I think ganks are like pretty fun unless you're playing like some cheese build but a lot of people will just get obsessed with well what's the best build i can make or what's the current meta and then they'll just forget to you know have fun with your build because not everything is about playing the meta you know I, I highly encourage people to modify my builds to be more fun for them another thing a lot of pvp builds won't do but pves do is no one really names their builds i get like a decent amount of people that are requesting you know skip a grouper i'm new to youtube what do i do in order to get big and and honestly, just building a name for the build goes a long way. Because for example, out of every build in the game, the one that's probably most known by name is God Slays. Just because I'm sure there's individual builds in the game that are more popular than the God Slayers. But for all PvP builds, because of how quickly people will essentially shift what they like playing, no one really gives the build a name. Also, here is the guy we need to talk to. We need to go to Summer Ionel and free the Authority Soldier, I believe. But yeah, you never really see PvP builds with a name. It's normally just X person's attunementless dagger, or like Gale Fist, Gale Rapier, whatever. Whatever's currently matter at the time. The only exception I can really think of off the top of my head is Nogo's LFT, which didn't really, I mean that has, that, that build is kind of just called Nogo's build, or LFT build. But that is an example of a build that wasn't necessarily made to be meta. Like it was made to be good, but it wasn't made around like any sort of fragile meta. Also, I forgot that Lionfish could do the beam without being in the depths. And that's honestly, that was probably why, one of the reasons why Nogo is so well known. It's because he essentially stuck with one series of builds for so long, when no one else in PvP really sticks to one build for that long. And that sort of let the build be well known. So huge tip to anyone out there who wants to be well known for making builds. You've got to make sure that the build itself is memorable and, you know, isn't just going to get nerfed next weekly. That's also why I don't typically make builds centered around anything that's busted in PvE. Like, not as busted as in, like, Tornado does a lot of damage, but, like, if you remember what would have been six months or a year ago when Arc Welder was extremely powerful and was doing way more damage than it should, that's an example of where PvE builds shouldn't be made around that. Like, I believe Super did, because that build, obviously because it was bugged, got nerfed the next weekly, and no one really made that build. So that's kind of the good thing about God Slayers. They incorporate a lot of different strong elements and not necessarily any one thing that's extremely broken. So that means they won't get nerfed super frequently and can actually build some sort of brand as a series of builds. Since you know most people in the PvE space, when they think of like a God Slayer build and they've seen it in action, they typically know that like if a V6 was going to exist then it would be pretty powerful. Which you know it does add pressure for me to make sure the builds are good but I don't really mind since I do enjoy making PvE builds quite a lot. I don't really know what, what I was even rambling about, to be honest. I kind of just got uh, distracted talking about PvE. What was I talking about? I, mean, I can't even remember. Uh, I'm just gonna climb here. I know I'm looking for a house in order to rescue the hostage. I think if I climb up, I can probably find it. Knowing me, I've definitely passed it already. Where would this house be? I'm thinking over there. That seems like it would be about right. Okay, yeah, this does look right. Here we go. This is the house we need. We just need to come down to this basement. Free this guy. The NPC we need to fight, it will be kind of hard for us, especially at like the low power we are, but we should be able to beat it. Uh, where is he at? Oh, there he is. Oh, he's just getting hit by one blades for free. Okay, this shouldn't be too hard. We'll just get him against the wall and let Providence Storms do the attacking. Man, that did a lot. What the hell? Bro, I'm getting some guys spam pinging me right now. I actually do have like pings on. Me. So some, some people will just spam ping me like a ton of DMs. So like, I don't mind responding to DMs. But when it's like one word per DM, plus they're pinging me in DMs, it gets kind of annoying. Especially when I'm trying to like focus up fighting something. Since you know, I am fighting the Oath of Tainment thing at my really low power. So I have no- I'm actually impressed I parried that crit. Oh, what the- 
Okay, that guy was surprisingly easy. I thought it was going to be harder, especially considering I'm power 16. But there is the oath that what we're going to have on the build. Let me unequip the arms for now. I'm definitely going to have to style out these chains in the future, but I'll leave them for now. So this gives us more mantra slots. There isn't really anything too important we can equip right now, just frozen servants. We also don't need to progress the oath either, since we're not going to use stuff like restraint on the build. Unfortunately, restraining chaser doesn't really have any benefit. So with our oath out of the way, let's just go kill... I think I'll just do Premonon in order to get the rest of our heavy weapon and frost draw. Actually, after that, let's see how many points we can invest into our heavy weapon. If we're lucky, we might be able to get to power 17. And it seems... Oh my god. Why? Why is it one point? All right, well, uh, I guess I just, like, carry these guys down here. Like, change this bit on them. Let me just get an aggro on me. There we go, power up. Cool head, frost, wyvern's core. I'll grab that. Extra damage. Then I will grab heavy hitter for some more posture damage. Very good for humanoids. Don't necessarily need any of these. So I'm just going to burn the rare and fold here. Then another point to proficiency. And let's go kill Primadon, I guess. So we're just going to do a fairy man right now. He should give us a fairly good amount of XP towards our heavy weapon. Since there's a lot of parrying in the fight. There's Ferryman dead, and our element unbound as well. Hopefully we got a decent amount of heavy weapon training XP from parrying him. Just because I know from past experiences, training heavy weapon is for some reason so slow I think it's bugged. At least the good thing is Ferryman does give us a ton of XP, so it's not like we're gonna reach the cap anytime soon. This is already more than I thought I'd get, can't lie. If we're lucky, we actually might power up. Oh my, of course. Full Ferryman fight, couldn't even power up. Seriously, devs, please. Heavy weapon XP is bugged. Or just all weapon XP as a whole. Takes way longer than it should. Sadly, no auto didact points to skip the annoying part of the prog. Power 18. We will grab Rending Impact. Don't need any of these, so we'll grab Frozen Legs, just because that's an extra rare. And then here, it's all pretty bad, so I'll just grab Frostbuster for now. Don't really need any of these, so I'll just grab Ice Carb for now, and we can reroll it later. Nothing in my Fairyman chest, so let's keep looping this boss. After two more Fairymen, we have officially hit Power 19. Cap Artist, we want that. That's going to allow us to wave dash on the build. Then I will grab Warrior's Swing to reduce damage while we have Hyper Armor. Nothing we really need here, so I'll grab Rising Flame for now, just because I know we're going to need another two-star mantra later on. I'm just going to commentate over this last Fairy then. I'm going to be taking him slower just so we can get more heavy weapon XP. But I want to point out something that one of my friends told me last night about the build. And it's the fact that the build is essentially ruined if you progress the oath. If you don't know, you progress Chain Warden by killing humanoids like Duke or Fairyman. Actually, Me Maestro too. If you have a chain attached to them. But there is a talent later on that you really don't want on the oath. And that's the talent that applies a chain on Flourish. And then if you M1 after that flourish, it pulls them in and does a chain one move. And you actually don't want that on this build, just because you really want your flourish for stuff like Chaser or Duke. So if you essentially ruin that flourish with the chain warden move, then that's going to result in, well, the build being significantly worse. However, as you can see, I've been killing Fairyman fine, and that's because it's only an issue if you kill one of the three humanoids while you have the chain attached to them. So essentially, you just never use Restrain, and you'll be fine. You'll get all the perks with the Oath without the downside. So should have parried there. So yeah, I'll make sure to explicitly say that in the showcase, but do not progress Chain Warden at all. Don't even risk having Restrain equipped. Otherwise, you could end up ruining the build, since for some reason there's no way to disable talents. Anyways, with this out of the way, we should be about to... Yep, 75 heavy weapon. That means we just need to unbound our heavy weapon from this Fairyman kill, and then we just gotta hit power 20 and max out our stats. So yeah, I thought that was a very interesting aspect about the build that I didn't really know, since I didn't exactly pay attention to what the Chain Warden talents did, as I'm really only going the Oath for the Master Slots. There's our heavy weapon unbound. I will actually grab the blue and wind gem for now. Nothing else we need. So let me just see if we can power up. I kind of doubt it just because of how slow heavy weapon is. Never mind, power 20 on the build. 
So I don't want any of these. I'll grab this for now. We're gonna have to do a lot of mantra and talent rerolling just because I'm not mysticking as much as I should. Kickoff, that's really good for climb height. If you don't know, Felinor plus Kickoff essentially allows you to climb stupidly high. I'll grab this for now, but I'll show you how high we can climb once I pick my traits. Yeah, that's that climb height is insane. Felinor is so good for mobility now that I don't need the Fortitude of Vesperian. I'm assuming we're not going to have any more points to our heavy weapon. Oh, we, we do. That's surprising. For the final stages of this build, I'll kill Fairyman one more time, and then we can start to min-max the build. I am getting ganked by some guy. Why is this man ganking me, man? What the hell? Absolute weirdo. Oddball. I didn't even do anything to him. The thing is, he was placing the Fairyman campfires wrong. Is this man even... Okay, I don't think he's gonna bother to chase. Absolute oddball. Is this man trying to do snipe me? Holy, this man's aim is horrible. And he doesn't even know how to do Fairyman. Like, he was placing the campfires on the outer thing. Is he real? Okay, he's actually gonna try and chase me. Okay, I'll just, like, outrun him. <laughs> what the hell is wrong with this guy? Well, uh, he got bored, so I'm just gonna go to one of these islands. Then just reset. Why do you gank someone at Fairyman for no reason, huh? Yeah, forget about it. We'll just go do Song Seeker and continue the build. The first step in our min maxing journey is going to be us unlocking Iron Sing. Simply because that allows us to eat gold to gain a free damage buff on the build. While most people don't even bother to unlock Iron Sing, to be honest, this is going to be the most sane min-maxing we do all video. Because I plan to do some pretty insane stuff like getting potions and getting artisan food on this build. Just to completely max out our damage, because I want to try and hit a zero cycle chaser. I think it's possible. Let me just grab all of the items we will need. I believe I should have them all in my bank. Aerosaur as well. Do I? Oh, wait, do I not have Umbrite? Okay, I may need to hop on a slot for Umbrite because I don't know where I put my ore. So let me just quickly do that and come back here to unlock Iron Sing. I found the Shadow Trainer. If you're wondering, I am actually on the original God Slayer V5 slot because I probed a lot of different V5 builds. It's sort of looking bare and has kind of aged a bit, but the slot's still good. Also, I ended up noticing that I have three astral enchant stones just sitting on the build listen the old the old pve player in me back when astral enchant stones were actually valuable still prevents me from using them although i think i'll probably just start chucking astral on more weapons just for fun anyways there is more than enough umbrite let's pull the deep back and chuck that into the deposit box while i'm there i'll also put my astral enchant stones in Kinda sad how they got it astral, but hey, at least everyone can use it now. I believe I actually already have an astral enchant stone in the bank. Yeah, I already did. So well, this would get me up to 11 astrals, I think. But, you know, if you told a player you had 11 astrals a year ago, that would be crazy. But nowadays, it sadly isn't as valuable anymore. I'm just gonna chuck more blue gems in the deposit box as well, just so I can put as many as I like on my mantras. Now let's hop slots. Here is the umbrite we needed. I also realized after the fact we had pure umbrite the whole time, I'm pretty sure. But uh, at least we had a V5 cameo on the V6 video. So let's talk to this guy. Wait, am I missing anything? Seems like I'm missing something. Uh, what are you missing? Oh, I'm missing uh, iron. Okay, now we've got to go get iron. Now we can grab the iron we need. Hopefully I'm not missing anything else for iron sink. Let's just talk to the NPC. And there we go. Let's uh, yeah, I'll drink this now. There we go. We can now eat gold to get a damage buff. And that is another thing off the min-maxing list. The main thing we've got to do now is go to Shrine of Chance and start to max out the talents on the build. So let me just jump across this gap. Oh, are we going to make it? We're not going to make it. It's all right. We can uh, fall into the ocean. I'll just spawn boat off guild base and then we'll head to Fort Merit. It's a really useful trick if you just like face your back to the guild base wall. You can essentially spawn it anywhere. It's either that or you have to wait till you find an island or, you know, just like don't lose your boat. So after crossing off all the talents I already have on the build maker, we are only three off a perfect build, which was actually way less than I thought. I was expecting to be missing 10 talents. So let's start to reroll. Just realized I didn't mystic at all. That's probably gonna help if I do it. Luckily, we're only after three common cards, so they're gonna be really easy to get. I once performed at a circus will be our first prompt. From Shrine of Chance, this should give us time to go not what we wanted but i believe there's no other cards in the tree now there we go time to go two more cards left let me go guarantee crystal shrapnel 
take the path of a glass dancer. Now let's find something to get rid of. We won't need lightweight. Shrapnel, perfect. Now we've literally just got fast blade left. And well, we don't exactly need to get fast blade, but I just want to have every possible advantage I can get in terms of my talents. Again, I'm trying to prog this build as min max as possible. So if that means I have no HP, which like that's to be expected, I've literally not been taking any cards that give us HP. But like if it if it costs HP, I don't really care what the result is. The bosses will be dead instantly anyways. Don't want reclaim glass. Don't want that. Burn that. Take the carry load, and then I will re-roll again. Let's see, fast blade, and that is the talents of the build completely maxed out. I believe we still have extra talents that we don't need. However, I can go get rid of those at a later point. For now, let's just go fix up the mantras on the build. Here we go. Goodbye, oh. Atrus. <laughs> <laughs> Goodbye, Atrus. We're going. Villa, we actually did it. This is no longer a dream. <laughs> Never mind. Oh, what is this? How, 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 Whoa. like, how far do I need to fall? Uh, can I place a TP on you? Uh, just fall halfway. Oh, uh, you're fine. Uh, let, me, let me place a TP on you. Just fall, and whenever you feel like it, just don't reach the bottom. It's okay. really tall, so you're fine. Now. Yo! <laughs> I didn't place your heart. Uh, Wait, I'm, 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 I'm gonna get you I, in. I, 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 I can't. Oh, I got Sparks off. No Sparks off. Could I actually hit? Can you, uh, help me in again? Oh, uh, yeah. So. Yeah, thank you guys. I needed a sh I needed a shrine real quick. Thanks Bro, for bringing I'm, me to I'm literally gonna... mod off. Genuinely, they should make everything work. Also, Villar, I can't really help right now. I'm kind of. Uh, what are you doing? <laughs> I'm, I'm in a wall. All right, what a temptation chance. Brother, brother. <laughs> the brother in the mod office. I'll take him, I'll take him. Wait, take, take a selfie with, the, with him. <laughs> Like we need a Go eat, you buried and, him! Uh... He's gonna die! Alright, right, I'm sorry, little one. Alright. Uh, to be expected from logging out on top of Monophis. Hello, how are we doing? So maybe it wasn't the best idea to well, glitch in the mod office as it did send me to depths, but that's fine because there is some stuff we can do while here. However, I think I might just call the div back. You know, it's probably easier for me to use these shrines in the depths. So I'll probably just go talk to young Shul in order to get the rest of our mantras. And once I do, I can escape depths. So I'll get an idol right now. That way I can leave the depths immediately when I finish getting all my mantras. There's quite a few we need, however, that's fine. I'm still unsure of some of the extra mantras. Like having Ice Carve is good, but I don't know if it's something I want to permanently keep. That being said, just because I am ignoring all HP talents, it means I can be a little more generous with how many mantras I have. Let's just pick up a Idol of Young Shul, and off we go to reroll our mantras. Okay guys, I just checked and we have four spare mantras we can roll off, but we need a total of six on the build. So I'm gonna have to use some Shrine of Unification after, but for now let me seek Charisma mantras and we will start re-rolling. Also, I have my fan going and it's raining outside, so apologies if you can hear either of that in the audio. Let's get rid of Flare Volley. Taunt, oh wait, yeah, we need Ice Block as well, so I'll take that for now. At least we know Taunt will likely show up again. So I'll get rid of Fire Palm, Taunt, and and don't need any of those so we'll take that let me just get rid of taunt and ice flock and now i just need to get ice cubes so three star ice mantras let's re-roll rising flame fissure skates we need flame leap didn't get ice cubes let's re-roll jolt grab fissure ice cubes yep we need that and i think that's all the mantras that we needed to re-roll so we're gonna have to use shrine of unification now let's see don't need frozen lay uh, Actually, no, I'll reroll off my common cards first before I get rid of any rares. Then what else do I need? I don't need this, so we're just going to get a random mantra. Now I'm going to go guarantee... What else do we need? I guess I'll grab Flame Sentinel right now. Flame Sentinel is just going to be a way for us to get some free extra damage since it automatically attacks. Let's get rid of Flare Volley. Salt... Flame Sentinel, perfect. We only have three more left, so I'm gonna try to get Lightning Clones right now. One Star Thunder Mantras. Let's see what we can Unification away. We won't need Cryosis, I think. And what else? Uh, need that, need that. I think I'll get rid of a rare, so we won't need Frozen Legs. Thunder Kick, Stream, 
Nope, don't need any of those. I am gonna burn Rising Flame for now. Take Lightning Stream and re-roll it. So, get rid of that. Fleeting Sparks, Fissure, Volley, uh, nothing we needed. So, let's get rid of Fleeting Sparks. And Lightning Clones, there we go. Final two mantras. It's gonna get kind of hard to shrine a division away some. So we we'll even need one star ice mantras. So I am going to get rid of. Ooh, okay, sort of hard right now. Damn, this is actually so hard. I swear we're meant to have more talents than this. Maybe build maker is just incorrect. Oh, okay, okay. I've been so confused to myself, but we're not meant to have Astral Wind. That would explain the slight talent differences. All right, we won't need to get rid of anything required. So let me get rid of Astral Wind then nothing we need here Should, let me just like double check that i don't have glacial arc already okay we don't so let's just re-roll that mantra and get one more i won't be needing where is it ice blade forge ice blade. uh oh my god i just realized uh we're gonna have an excess in mobility mantras so i need to get rid of one uh let's see what, what's in my mo do i have nothing in my mobility slot right now uh, passage how do i get that out it's gonna be really hard for us to roll for the right thing as we have an excess mantra in our mobility slot I'm trying to think can we need to try to we need to hope that we end up getting an extra mobility mantra just so we can re-roll off it so i kind of hope we get one forge stream iceberg nope don't need any of these we're gonna run out of knowledge just because we have something occupying our mobility slot therefore the game isn't gonna give us any sort of mobility mantra that's just how these things work all right well we'll have to get rid of that mobility mantra clogging the slot and use another moon's eye tome it really sucks that you can't unequip mantras because having wind passage in my mobility slot really screwed over the shrining there it made it near impossible for us to get a mobility mantra so let me go fix that and i'll come back to temple of hearts let's get the final mantra we need i am going to get rid of graceful flame and hopefully a glacial arc there we go and i think that's everything we need so now after all of that i am going to flee the depths and upgrade our mantras in the surface we are so close to finishing this build let's just level up our mantras now i honestly don't know if i'll have enough notes to max everything out just because of the sheer amount of mantras we have worst case though i'll just go farm some more notes and transfer them to this slot okay now we'll swap to our other set of mantras the server is oh it's a cali that's why it's laggy damn why is the cali ping so bad oh oh that's why my mantras aren't equipping okay i was putting them on the mantra table the whole time oh what's that and then i think Actually, I need to level up Flame Leap as well, but this should be all the mantras that we need to level up on the build. Let me just Flame Leap in the slot, Flame Leap, and then I need 150 more notes. I think if I just sell my rings and earrings, that should be enough money. There we go. Now we can max out the mantras on the build. Level up, and there we go. We have a lot of mantras on this build, I can't lie, but, you know, we're sacrificing extra talents we don't need, and I want to do everything with maxing efficiency i should probably sort out the drip on this build before i actually start you know doing bosses because if i had a cool clip i obviously want the build to look good okay back a little bit later uh ignore the outfit right now this is just my ether kit i am finally going to bell check on this build and then i'm going to start to do chases to essentially get a feel for how strong the build is i forgot i have tear and pendant on if i go high enough one fall should cut it Let's see. One more fall it is. Obviously, the bell we're hoping for on this build is Crazy Slots, because that does the most damage. However, for the moment, if we don't get it, I'll use whatever I get. So I'll use Portals, and now I am going to simply test without Crazy Slots against Chaser to see how much damage we're doing. My runs won't be super fast at the moment, because I just want to get the damage of the build down. From now on, I'll probably just be clipping stuff rather than, you know, flat out recording, because commentating is obviously going to make me play a little bit worse. So I will see you guys guys probably soon yeah, i just remembered something we forgot we need to get layer 2 talents on this build so i think i'm gonna do that before i start doing runs just because i think i'd appreciate being able to see let me actually kill bone keeper here i just realized i haven't actually modified frozen servants to well have blast spark on it so my damage is certainly taking a hit there okay yeah not bad considering bone keeper ran away immediately and we have zero dvm at the moment There's generator on. 
So what I'm gonna do now is wave dash to the ignition base. That, okay, the anti-cheat screwed me over there. And it should just be right, oh my god, of course we landed in a pit. But it should be right over here. So let's go inside and get the hook. Go. Now I'm just going to grab the talent. Let's go to cave real quick and get the spear. I'm still getting used to the mobility on this build because I'm not used to having these sort of mantra. Well, I'm not used to having temp splits in lane 2. Plus, it's been a while since I seriously tried to speedrun, so I'm going to be a little rusty. Let me just go through here, ignore this bounder. I'm going to flex a little bit by wave dashing. That was not necessary at all. Luckily, nothing can catch us just because we're that fast. I'll kill all of these guys. They just instantly died. Go down here. Good. Now we can go over here. Climb up this. And then we're just going to win past... Oh my... Oh my... Of course there's wind. That wind there is so annoying. I don't know why they made the hit... Why, why would they make the hitbox extend? Like, why on earth does that hitbox extend? There. Like you can't... If you don't have wind passage, you straight up just can't go through there. Now I have to wait for wind passage to clip through here. Seriously, devs, give that a normal hitbox. I don't know why that wind extrudes into the part where you come up. Let's just hand in this spear, and that is the final quest talent we need. Now let's just go to Chaser and kill him. Actually, now that I look at it, now that I look at my health, I'm gonna get a health pack real quick. Just because no conditioned runner on this build means I can't heal normally. And well, I need HP to make Spark Swap actually go anywhere. There we go. It's all my HP back. So we're just going to open this and then do the Bounder's Nest skip. We have so much goddamn mobility on this build that we can just go this way and it works. Like, that is crazy. I'm up here. Sparks off the Spawn Keeper. And just because I want to see how high we can get the damage on this build, I am actually going to build up Max Chain, which, you know, the build doesn't need it to one cycle. But seeing as we don't have any, well, crazy slots yet. Jesus, we are so laggy. I need this Bone Keeper to get in here. Oh, let's see if we can get there. Okay, now he's in there. This is going to hit me. Oh, we're good. Are we, are we taking half physical damage? That would explain so. There we go. Bone Keeper dead. Now, with that Max Chain, assuming we don't get hit by Chaser, which is honestly pretty likely. I just want to see how much damage we can deal to him. I probably won't be commentating just because I need to focus. In the future, I will learn how to land a spine cutter there. Of course we get hit immediately. I did not hear that grab at all. I mean, that's what, that's not me for commentating. Oh, of course I get grabbed. It's always the grab. All the ceiling attack. Also, yeah, keep in mind, we don't actually have, uh, what is it, Frozen Summons modified properly. And Chaser had no Arnold Scream on him because we took too long. RIP. Lost all of our damage buffs because I was commentating. Funny thing, we're actually crushing last resort right now. And there is Chaser dead. I'm going to do some practice runs after this to see if, you know, we can actually get some fast kills. Because at the moment, we are not going anywhere near the speed of this build. Hey, hey, Skipper, I, th I think corrupting the bell was worth it. Bruh. <laughs> He's gonna get water out of now. <laughs> You're here, good. My friend, I swap him on. Please, bro, please swap him uh, on. Uh, I will spark so I will that, spark you back. Is that too fast for that? Oh, uh, <laughs> easy. I got teleported in. Is this it? one graphic? I'm on one graphics. Oh my no god. Way. No way. Now you're cooking. cooking. Now you're cooking. Now yeah, the man. cooking has started. Yeah. He's one of us. Wait, do you have a ring of castles on? I have a ring of castles. Ring of castles is lame, bro. I can maintain max damage. I can maintain max damage with ring of castles. This is worth it. I get 25 charisma as well instead of fortitude. Like charisma? Like charisma? Like charisma? Like charisma? Sure. I'm, I'm so glad I clip on multiple audio tracks in case something good happens. I'm cutting all of DM's audio out. What? <laughs> every, every time he talks, he's gonna be like, go silent. Poor, poor Nebula. Poor Nebula. The audience will never know what you just said, buddy. You don't like the truth being spread around. <laughs> Should I work with this? Should I rock this? Should I rock this? Sure, sure. Rock it, rock it, rock it. Rock it, okay. Uh, you, gotta, you gotta be good though, because it's hard to use. Don't worry, as you no. yourself said, I skip a grip up and, and the peak of speed running. I already oh, messed up. Boy. Who said that, bro? You said that. Oh, whoops. I skip a And ever, skip everyone else in the progression will hear this too. Oh, shit. I'm fucking. Yeah, of course. I'm getting AI, bro. 
It's actually over. <laughs> Rest in peace, no more. My whole career, yo, my whole career is dead if I call you the best speedrunner, bro. <laughs> I've gone to the ceiling. <laughs> I'm gonna do this strat, I'm gonna do this strat. Rest in peace for HP, rest in peace for HP. No, I pro I prop lost his all and I'm alive. Oh, Odin. Bang, bang. Rest in bang. It's gonna be all. Maybe a one cycle, not a one cycle grip. One cycle? Yeah, no way. Not a grip. If, if, I, if I didn't have if I didn't have a great subtle kind of grip. Nah, nah, you should you should I told you the craziest slots was going in. <laughs> you did. The crazy slots, I knew it. It's, that's the message, yo. Hey, What's skip that DM you're the relinquishing the number one <laughs> NMG oh, title to me? Yeah. I did not say such thing, yo. Uh, I don't know, man. I, 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 guess, I guess if you insist. I guess if you insist. <laughs> <laughs> Dang, then Payne's back! Skipper, Payne's oh back! Oh my god. I knew it, Skipper! Oh, what the hell? Skipper, oh Skipper, oh Skipper. Hey, hey, Skipper. Skipper. Me telling you to use the, the system. Bro. <laughs> me telling you to use the sinner's ash, didn't pay off the skin. Damn, yeah, it paid itself back in one round. You knew. <laughs> you saw the future. <laughs> I had the six cents. I'm just gonna voice over these next few sections. I just wanna show you an insane run I got against Chaser while practicing with V6. So in this run, I start Chaser without any insects. I miss the initial spine cutter that you can get at the start, but when he's about to be stunned, I actually get hit by the ceiling, losing all of my chain I just built. I miss an extra spine cutter there, not to mention my master timings are still kind of off at this point, because I'm very rusty. But even though I did all of those things wrong, V6 still managed to one cycle chaser. He throw overdrive, I think. Oh, I did it, I hit the one cycle grip! Then not to mention, I got this sub 7 second Ferryman run, which was pretty insane. And that is the end of the God Slayer V6 progression. This build is, well, obviously it's an upgrade. We managed to get even more damage, and I'll be trying to get some insane times on bosses in the future. If you enjoyed, make sure to like and subscribe, because the more likes this video gets, the faster I'll put out the showcase. So make sure you join the Discord for the build, and turn on notifications so you don't miss it. Check out some more PvE content, there is a lot of new builds on the way, and I'll see you all next time.